If you're good at something, never do it for free. What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and what a strong start it's been for season 3 of Black Ops Cold War. I posted plenty of coverage here on the channel, lots of videos, a couple of streams, hopefully you've been enjoying that. But tonight, we're going to be talking about the first major update in season 3, a new DLC pack, Berlin teasers, and even a surprise about COD 2021. Definitely stay tuned. But before I jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below to make sure you're staying up to date with the ridiculous amount of juicy information that's being released for multiple Call of Duties at once. Black Ops Cold War, Modern Warfare, Warzone, and even World War II Vanguard. I know the news and rumors could be a bit overwhelming to follow, so as usual, I'll be doing my best to break all of it down in the easiest way possible, as you guys know me for. But today we also got a small patch in Black Ops Cold War featuring updates and sticks and stones. The ballistic knife was also removed from Sniper's Only Mosh Pit. Not sure why it was there to begin with. We have a fix for the Beck Operator mission, some zombie scoreboard fixes, outbreak stability issues that were ironed out, and more. I'll have the patch notes also linked down below in the description. And we'll be talking about the major update in Season 3, Deeper into this video. Now, we also have the Big Joke 2 Tracer Pack, which unexpectedly went live this past weekend. Some images of it did surface a bit early last week, and I was assuming that it would release maybe during the mid-season update, but I'm not complaining. It ended up releasing during the start of the season, which I'm very happy about. It, of course, costs 2,400 COD points and comes with the Funny Bone Port Nova Clown Skin. We have the Setup Skin for the AK-74U and the Clapback Skin for the Groza, both of which have funny blue and purple tracers. We then have a Backup Map Accessory Watch, the Hilarious Hilo Vehicle Skin, the Surrounded Reticle, and the Deadly Serious Emblem. So, this is a bit of a sequel to the first Big Joke pack, which released, I think, they're in January of Season 1. So now we have a bit of a Bonnie and Clyde situation going on in Black Ops Gold or Multiplayer. A uh, his and hers clown skin, which to me is great. And I was actually waiting for a Tracer pack for the Groza, since this weapon is an absolute machine over in Calder Multiplayer. It is disgusting, as you're going to see in the background gameplay. Hopefully you guys enjoy that. But while we're on the subject of clowns, real quickly, I just want to call out a couple of things that I've been seeing very frequently on Twitter and Reddit lately. So, the first thing is the good old Call of Duty cycle. People hating on the current Call of Duty and praising the previous ones. It happens every single year, right? People bash on the new Call of Duty and then it takes the next one so they can be able to appreciate what the last one had to offer. I see this every single year and it's never going to end. Not sure why that keeps continuing and what could break the cycle. That's just unknown. But, another thing is people being blinded by nostalgia, pretending that older multiplayers were flawless. Even though Modern Warfare 2 was severely broken broken with lots of different mechanics, one-man army, and some other things. Black Ops 2 also had severe lag issues on certain platforms. You may not have experienced it, but it existed. <laughs> Trust me when I tell you guys this. And I love both of those games, don't get me wrong. I played them both in their prime, had a great experience for the most part, despite some issues. But remastering both of those multiplayers and this present community, I'm not sure how that would work out, right? If you kind of patch and iron out some of the issues those games had, people would complain that they're not authentic. People would complain that they changed things about the multiplayer is making them worse. But then if you don't change anything about those games and iron out those broken mechanics, the current community might not be able to handle what was so broken back in the day, right? The community has changed drastically when it comes to Call of Duty multiplayer. And also, real quickly, people claiming Black Ops 3 Zombies was flawless, I understand that, right? That game was phenomenal. I loved every minute of that season, don't get me wrong. But people do forget the Shadows of Evil was ripped to shreds at release, wasn't praised well. Now it's a top five. I know that. The community has changed their mind about Shadows. Also, Zetsubo and Revelations, were negatively received for the most part. So people really do forget how that season went down for Black Ops 3. And lastly, the Battlefield nerd. So if you guys like Battlefield, more power to you. No disrespect to that. But I find it really, really cringe lately that people are saying COD's dead, Battlefield 6 for the win, you know, Activision's over, and this next Battlefield's gonna take over the gaming industry. And I'm like, hold on a second. How many years have they been saying that now? They said it for how many Battlefields in a row, and it just doesn't happen. Activision has a severe advantage over any other publisher when it comes to first person shooters, and that likely is never going to change. Unless Activision drops multiple Call of Duty flops in a row, which is very, very unlikely, it's never happened, then Battlefield could do anything that your heart desires. Battlefield could be the greatest Battlefield entry of all time, and it still really won't come close to Call of Duty. And that's just a fact, unfortunately. I mean, hey, if you guys like Battlefield more than Call of Duty, no problem with that. When we talk about business, numbers, player bases, DLC content, when we talk about those things, Call of Duty will always remain on top. And that's the way it's going 
going to be. But hey, you know what? If World War II Vanguard releases and a broken state and Battlefield 6 is perfect, then hey, you know what? That's great. Maybe Battlefield can have the upper hand a little bit this year, but I just don't see it dethroning Call of Duty as we know it. Now, we also have an update regarding the Hunt for Adler event thanks to Raven. So they made it clear over on Trello that a fix is scheduled for the event and an announcement about it will be releasing very soon. Now, I would assume that by tomorrow, they'll end up announcing whatever these changes are to the event. And to no surprise, they'll very likely be extending the event by a few days since the people out there would prefer to complete the challenges in Warzone over Cold War. And like I confirmed in the video that I made a few days ago about this event, you are able to complete the Warzone contracts right now in private games. So that's frustrating because you need about 20 plus people to start a private game. And yeah, that could take a while to set up. But luckily on stream the other day, I had lots of very generous people hop into the lobby. We managed to do the challenges all in a private match. The only issue with that is only one squad can actually pick up and complete a contract in the lobby. So I wish it was a bit different to where everybody that's in the private match can get the completion for the contract after one person does it. But no, only one squad of four can get the completion for doing said contract. So it'll take a few restarts if you want to make sure that every player in that 20 plus player lobby gets the unlock for it. So there is a ending animation for completing the Hunt for Adler event, as you'll see on screen. Nobody's really showcased what this looks like on YouTube since very few people have done the event in full. And yeah, you could have unlocked the Adler skin through just doing colder challenges. I still understand that. But, you know, it's nice to have all six challenges done since they are very easy to do. And I'm assuming a fix for this will likely go live tomorrow, as I said before. But now when it comes to the first major update in Season 3 of Black Ops Cold War, it was revealed in a recent post by Activision, as I'll put on screen. It confirmed that this week we're going to have Diesel 6v6 replacing the Diesel Faceoff playlist, which is a bit ironic since on stream I had a lot of trouble finding Diesel 6v6. I really wanted to try it, but wasn't able to find the match on it. And luckily off stream though, I have played a few matches of 6v6 Diesel and it plays really well. So we also have the standard face-off playlist returning, which will also feature Diesel in it. So that'll be sitting at the main menu. We have a new gunfight tournament dropping in the next few days, which I'm happy about since the first tournament was a lot of fun. It was a bit sweaty at times, but I ended up being able to complete it with a buddy of mine shown. Now, what's interesting about the gunfight tournament though is that the barracks menu in Black Ops Cold War multiplayer does reveal at least 11 more gunfight tournaments are on the way. So the tournament tab in barracks will show you the final reward of the first tournament with the next rewards being classified at the moment. But yeah, at some point in time, we're going to be able to see what all the final rewards were for all the gunfight tournaments. And I'm assuming they'll start dropping these new tournaments every two, three weeks since there are what, 11 more to go. They're going to have to drop these in a bit of a rapid succession, which I'm happy though. You know, the gunfight tournaments are really interesting and I'm hoping we get some real sick rewards towards the end of some future ones. Now, we also have the continuation of Sticks and Stones that'll be remaining as a featured playlist in Black Ops Cold War. We then have three new bundles releasing, which we have an early preview of thanks to COD Tracker. We have the Anime Pop Stars pack featuring two anime-themed legendary weapon blueprints, an emblem, sticker, and a weapon charm. We have the new Nightmare pack featuring two weapon blueprints, an animated calling card, animated emblem, a charm, and a finishing move with a new character that was featured on the Season 3 roadmap and even in the intro cutscene cinematic. We then have the Sticks bundle, or in the Sticks bundle I should say, for Naga with once again two legendary weapon blueprints, an emblem, and a finishing move. It'll also feature a Tombstone perk charm and a Speed Cola sticker for all the Zombies fans out there. So I'm looking forward to this one. We don't have many cool skins for Naga in game, so I'm glad he's getting some love with this upcoming bundle. Now we then have a bit of a teaser for Berlin DLC 2 featured on the new multiplayer map Diesel. You may have seen this already, but not many people have actually pointed this out on YouTube just yet. We have a double tap poster sitting suspiciously over here by the gas station, and it could be confirming that it'll be the next perk that gets added in Berlin DLC 2. We know that right now we're on a bit of a pattern that every time a new Zombies map releases in Black Ops Cold War, a new perk gets added alongside that. The Wonderfizz machine does reveal three mysterious perks, or three upcoming perks that we could all speculate are double tap, PhD, and mule kick. Those have been rumored for for many months now, so I guess that seemingly confirms that we're getting at least three more traditional zombies maps. Unless Treyarch, for whatever reason, ends up dropping new perks without new maps, sure, that's possible, but I highly doubt they're gonna go that route. I definitely think we're in store for at least three more traditional zombies maps to line up with the fact that previous Black Ops iterations also released about five to six traditional zombies maps before any of the remasters. Now, I will leave my previous zombies video linked down below in the description, since in that video we went in more detail about the three upcoming perks, the three upcoming zombies maps, as well as the new Easter eggs that were added to Outbreak. Now also a reminder that a change was made to the Barracks tab of the Black Ops Colder menu which has now added the Arcade from the campaign allowing you to play classic Activision games such as Barnstorming, Boxing, Chopper Command, Enduro, Fishing Derby, Grand Prix, Kaboom,
Doom, Pitfall 1 and 2, River Raid, and now even Skiing. So a free bundle was added to the game a couple of days ago, giving us the free retro game known as Skiing, as you guys can see. So yeah, if you guys are still interested in picking up all the arcade machines from each of the campaign missions, I have a guide that I made during the launch week of Black Ops Cold War, which has done pretty well. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed that. But if you guys prefer to play the arcade games from the campaign itself, feel free. But if you guys get bored waiting at the main menu for something, then you can also boot it up from the barracks. But when it comes to a new update regarding future Black Ops Cold War content, we did get some new information thanks to some verified insiders over on Twitter who mentioned that new weapons that are coming to the game include the Chicom CQB, a familiar weapon from Black Ops 2. It's been a while since we've seen that one. We have the nail gun that was added during Black Ops 3. I had a ton of fun using that in Search and Destroy, different game modes. I mean, that weapon was phenomenal. A ton of fun. And we then have the explosive ammo crossbow, which I'm assuming is similar to the Pack-a-Punch crossbow from Black Ops 1 Zombies. People out there have speculated this could have been the recurve bow from the campaign of this game. And sure, that's possible. We already have the combat bow as a kill streak. We already have a standard crossbow that just got added in Season 2 as well. So I'm not sure where this explosive crossbow fits in, but I'm sure they'll make it work. We have the hammer melee weapon, the Kukri. Probably said that wrong, but we then have the war mace as well. So a ton of weapons that were found as of recently and got added to the files with Black Ops Cold War Season 3. Some of these weapons could be coming during the Season 3 Reloaded update in about a month's time, or many of them could be saved for Season 4. Wouldn't be surprised about that at all. And I think what's cool about this is the fact that in Black Ops 3, up in like the nail gun, for example, wasn't available in Zombies, only multiplayer. So being able to see these weapons in Zombies going forward for Black Ops Cold War really has me excited on top of everything. Now, don't forget there's still plenty of content left on the Season 3 roadmap, which is set to drop in about a month's time for Season 3 Reloaded. They could pull a Season 1 where they have two separate mid-season updates, one mid-season update where it features the remaining content on the roadmap, and then a Reloaded update sometime after that. Or they could pull a Season 2 where both the mid-season update and the Reloaded update are on the same day. You never know, but we have a map known as Echelon for 6v6, which we talked about plenty of times in the channel before. It sounds really exciting, and gameplay of it already surfaced a couple of months back. Can't show it on screen for obvious reasons. Maybe check the description if you guys are looking for something spicy. But that map seems like it'll be the Mount Yemental, the Apocalypse, the Pines of a new season. Essentially the focus for multiplayer that season, also featured in the intro cinematic for whatever season that is. So they'll probably save that for season four. That's just what I'm thinking right now. People out there have suggested that it could drop during season three reloaded, but I don't think that's gonna be the case. We also have a map known as Dunes for a bigger scaled experience, whether it's fire team or combined arms. That also has not been confirmed as of lately, but it'll probably drop during the next season. Now to end off this video, we have a very interesting rumor that I wanted to address in a separate video and I still might if more information becomes available. But for now, we have a rumor that was posted on our wonderful website 4chan which i'll warn you guys right now 4chan isn't a very reliable website i would say there's like a one in a hundred chance that a rumor or a leak that gets posted on 4chan ends up coming true i believe if i'm not mistaken an early leak for avengers infinity war was posted on 4chan first and ended up being real and yeah there's a chance it could be real so take it with a grain of salt but somebody went ahead and posted from an anonymous account of course insider here sledgehammer are getting sent back to support studio warzone had changed how cop will be handled and Activision are giving Infinity Ward all they want after the mega success of Modern Warfare 2019. Vanguard is unreleasable, barely any work into multiplayer right now. They were just gonna port assets from World War II but the new engine is not compatible with how World War II was made. Activision will have the release this year be Modern Warfare 2 Remastered Multiplayer with more content coming to Modern Warfare 2019, Warzone with Cold War 2. Activision will spin it as some combined COD fan event leading into Modern Warfare 2 that's dropping in 2022. So lots of twos in here. So let's break this down piece by piece. First of all, before anybody questions the legitimacy of this 4chan leak, let's just point out the obvious. So Charlie Intel posted an article about an hour or two ago stating that the anonymous user who originally wrote this 4chan leak has come out and said that he faked it all and didn't think that people would actually believe it. What I'm confused about is how Charlie Intel verified the anonymous person that wrote this to begin with. I'm assuming they did it, they wrote an article on it, so I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, so it looks like it's not true. But what's confusing now is the fact that this 4chan leak ended up getting DMCA'd when somebody posted it in a Discord server somewhere. So if that was the case, right, you know Activision doesn't strike anything that's false, they don't copyright strike fake news, they always copyright strike legitimate information that's leaked. 
So the thing to point out here is that you could be striked for just talking about World War II Vanguard. The word Vanguard itself could be what triggered Activision to take down the original post. It may not actually be the information in the post regarding Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer, new content in Cold War or Modern Warfare. That's how I've interpreted this. And I know firsthand, if you read some leaked information, there is a solid chance Activision will take it down, which to me is a bit silly because without going off on a tangent, what if somebody sends me information and I make a video saying, hey guys, somebody sent me this information, let's talk about it, here are my thoughts. If that information was legitimate leak, Activision could strike it down instead of just saying, hey, DK or hey, so-and-so, would you kind of take down this content? We don't want it on YouTube, it's early information. That's just how the YouTube system goes, but luckily, you know, as has happened in the past, whenever I've made a video talking about quote-unquote inside information, if the video got striked down, YouTube will put it back up since the video really didn't ever break terms of service. I never show any leaked images or videos on screen, I'm just talking, and you can't copyright strike my voice off obviously. But all that aside, could a tiny part of this even be true? Maybe somebody heard something behind the scenes that there were discussions being made about not releasing a premium Call of Duty this year. I mean, Activision already confirmed one in the recent investors call. Major news outlets already talked about it. So I'm sure Activision wouldn't lie to their own shareholders. They have an upcoming premium Call of Duty in the fall. And we've seen a yearly Call of Duty release since 2005. The last year they took off was 2004, almost two decades ago. So why would they stop now is what I'm trying to get at. They're at a peak with Call of Duty right now seeing numbers and player bases they've never seen before because of the huge success of Black Ops Cold War, Modern Warfare, Warzone, all combined, throwing COD Mobile into the mix. And they're making a lot of money, so they can afford a year off, don't get me wrong, but with major releases like Battlefield and some other franchises coming out that are first-person shooters, I'm not sure if this year in particular would be a good time to take a year off. I'm just not sure. Maybe with the pandemic, such hammers having a bit of a slow start with developing World War II Vanguard. Again, they were working on COD 2020 at one point and got moved to the side, so they were working on a new game from what they were originally working on for this year's Call of Duty, or I should say last year's in 2020. So I get it, such hammers had a bit of a rough patch over the past four or five years, but they just hired 200 plus people. They are now a multi-project studio, so why would they not be making a premium Call of Duty is what I'm getting at too. So again, the 4chan post is fake, no legitimacy behind it. But even from a marketing standpoint, think logistically about this. How would it feel to release a Modern Warfare 2 Remastered multiplayer this upcoming fall, and then just a year later they release another game called Modern Warfare 2? I mean, they could probably make it work, don't get me wrong, but that would sound a bit silly, and from a PR standpoint, it doesn't seem right, right? It would be a bit off. But leave all your thoughts on this down below in the comment section. This has been DK Dynamite. What are your thoughts on this post from 4chan? Is there any legitimacy behind it? What do you guys think about it? And also, what are your thoughts on the first major update coming to Season 3 of Black Ops Color later this week? How do you feel about the new Big Joke Tracer bundle? As well as the double tap teaser for Berlin over on Diesel? Leave all your thoughts down below. Really hope you've enjoyed and peace out, everyone.